Welcome to our brand new Sew Confident Series 10. I'm so happy that you can join me as we make a garment a month. For our first project, we will be making the Maison Top. We're going to start with a simple design to get used to the concept of these classes and the whole process. I will be taking you through the steps to make the top and highlighting the important points that will help you sew better and more confidently. So let's look at the top. I like the fact that this top is really simple. It's a great project to start at the very beginning of our whole year. It has a really nice ready to wear binding and I'm gonna teach you how to make this perfectly. It's three quarters of an inch wide rather than our normal half inch wide. So there's a little trick to it. It has a nice full sleeve that ends at about the elbow. It's meant to blouse and it gathers a little bit, just more like easing into a bottom band. So here's what you're going to learn in the class. You're going to learn how to sew jersey that curls, how to match stripes at side seams. I'm going to show you several seam and hem finish options. You're going to learn how to install professional looking neck bindings. And I'm going to share all kinds of tips and techniques for achieving the most professional look. We're going to be using some cotton jersey knit for this class. And the way you identify jersey is it has lengthwise ribs on the face of it and horizontal little rows on the back side. It's much like knit and purl in knitting. Sometimes it's very difficult to really see that, but if you look closely, you can see the difference in the texture between the right side and the wrong side. But the most identifying feature of Jersey is that it curls to the right side when you stretch it on the cross grain. And it does curl to the wrong side when you stretch it on the vertical grain. But I'm usually more concerned about the crosswise grain. So be sure and stretch it and then you'll know for sure which side to use as the right side of your fabric. There are two seam finishes that I recommend for sewing jersey knits. The first is to simply use your polyester thread and a regular stitch length of about 2.4 to 2.5 millimeter in length and sew on the seam line, just a straight stitch. And then using your isocord serging thread or another kind of whatever you have for a serger thread really, set it up for three thread formation and then you will serge the two raw edges together just taking off a little bit of the edge and leaving about 3 8 to a half an inch of a finished seam. And then that seam will get pressed in one direction. If you don't have a serger or an overlock machine, as it's really called, then you will want to, again, stitch on the stitching line and then stitch about a quarter of an inch away from that, again, a straight stitch, and trim really close to that second row of stitching and that is simply your seam. That will keep the edges from curling and the seam will really lie flat. Now we're going to learn how to put on the perfect neck binding. The neck binding pieces that we produce here at the Sewing Workshop are based on a certain ratio. And that ratio is 7 eighths, meaning that the neck binding is smaller than the circumference of the neck opening. You can see from the chart that there are two ways to calculate that 7 eighths ratio. I'm using 24 inches as an example of the circumference of the neck opening. So that's the first thing you will do is measure that and then choose which method of math you want to do to come up with your 7 eighths ratio. You can see in the graphic that I'm using an example of a neck binding that is 24 inches long. And there are two different, two or three different ways to calculate that ratio. Our neck binding is correct for this pattern, but if you're using a different pattern, you might need to calculate your own neck binding length. So let's start with how you deal with these neck bindings, these pieces of fabric that curl and are so unruly sometimes to work with. So again, I have drug the piece on the ironing surface to flatten the curl. 
And I'm using some fusy web on the very edge, but in this case, I don't need the complete width of the fusy web. I've actually cut it in half. You just need a little bit. And I've already fused it to one long edge. And notice that I've kept it out of the ends where I'm gonna be sewing the seam. But I do want to fuse the two raw edges together. So I'm gonna remove the fusy web and start pressing these edges together. So I can get these finger pressed just a little bit and then fuse those edges. And notice I'm not fusing or pressing the fold at this point, just those raw edges. I like to keep the neck binding a little bit soft for a while until I actually have it on the garment. But what this does is this really helps you control that curl of a jersey and you're not fighting this as you're applying this neck binding to the neck opening. So now you have a flat, nice piece to work with. Before we actually do any sewing on this neck binding, we want to do some marking. A stitching line is important to identify. So I have my see-through ruler and I'm going to place it three quarters of an inch from the fold, and that's important, from the fold, not from the raw edge. It's much more important to keep a distance that's the same from the fold, and we don't care so much about the seam allowance width. So just mark with your chalk the entire length, three quarters of an inch. The next step is to sew the ends of this binding together. And you remember that I kept the fusy web out of the end so that I can get to that. And I've already pinned them together so my raw edges are even. And then this is where I find that a little scrap of tissue paper really comes in handy. Because sometimes when you start sewing on the very edge of these knits, they can get hung up and they can get really tricky to start with lots of threads down into your throat plate and you have to dig them out and oh, it's such a mess. So the paper stabilizer is really handy in this particular condition. And the paper comes right off. We just tear it off, really easy. You can use leftover tissue paper from your patterns. This is pattern paper, doesn't really matter what you use just something kind of sheer that tears easily. So now I want to trim this seam. And you might want to press this open. Sometimes you can do it with your fingers. And if you want to go to the ironing board, that's fine too. But now you can complete the folding of your binding. Now we're going to quarter mark this and also the garment as well. I'm starting with my neck binding when I'm quarter marking. So I have folded it with the seam allowance at one end. And there's a fold at the other end. And I'm just going to put a little clip right there through the seam allowances. Then I put that new clip on top of the seam so that I have two new end folds and I'm going to clip those end folds. So now I have divided my neck binding in fourths. I want to do the same thing to the garment. I have the seam allowances of the shoulders that I can stack on top of one another. so that I can find my center front and center back. Now, sometimes I actually mark these when I'm cutting out, but if I forget, then this is how you do it. Just make sure that your, seat, your edges are lined up so that you can get the right proportion. There's the center front. And now to get the last two, you want to line up the center front and the center back clips 
line up those raw edges. And now we're going to put a little clip right here. And notice that it's not at the shoulder seam. It's just a little distance from the shoulder seam. That's the way it's supposed to be. It's rare that it is the shoulder seam because necklines are just not even in the front and the back. So when you divide them, they're going to be a little bit different. So now I'm ready to pin the neck binding onto the neck opening. And obviously the seam goes to the center back. The opposite clip from the seam is the center front. I'm only going to use four pins. One at the center front. Move this around so that I line up the ones near the shoulder seam. Center back. I'm right sides together, right side of the binding to the right side of the garment. I've made that mistake a few times. And one last pin. That's all you need for this process. So now I'm ready to go to the sewing machine and sew it. I put it into the sewing machine so that the entire circle of the neckline is on top of the whole surface of the sewing machine. I'm going to start at the center back at the seam and this is where my chalk marks come in handy because I want to sew on those previous chalk marks. So I just take a couple of stitches to get started and needle down position is essential. Notice I don't sew in, over pins ever. I'm going to grab the next pin with my right hand. And my left hand holds the neck binding and that's what guides it to keep it lined up so that all the raw edges are together. I like the needle down position so that I can lift the presser foot and readjust a little bit if I need to. But my left hand is in control of where that's placed with the raw edges. I'm giving it a little bit of a tug with my right hand and placement with my left hand. I'm coming to the shoulder seam and since I started in the back I want to make sure that that seam allowance is to the back. So usually I have to readjust that. Now I'm at the first shoulder seam. Let's do one more section and then I'll show you what it looks like finished. So I'm grabbing the next pin with my left hand, the neck binding with my left hand, right hand on the pin, left hand on the binding, and I'm going to continue to sew, take out my pin, readjust. Sometimes you have to take a breath and just readjust. I'm trying to give it the same tension in pulling the neck binding. Remember the neck binding is smaller than the neck opening, so you have to stretch it. So I would continue to do this for the next two quarters. And now I'll show you what it looks like after I've sewn it. I've sewn the last two quarters completely with my straight stitch. And now I've shifted to my serger or overlock so that I can three thread serge the seam. And you notice how narrow I get this. It's about three eighths, maybe a fat quarter, but this is an important something to note that I don't leave this seam allowance very wide. Otherwise your neck binding will tend to sort of flip out. So once you've sewn everything completely in the round, then you want to serge finish your seam as well. Now I'm going to show you how to finish this off. So you notice there's a tail that I've left and I leave it pretty long because I want to feed that through a needle that has a large eye. And the larger the better, in my opinion. So I'm feeding that through the big eye. And then I want to take the tip of the needle and simply slip that under 
some of the stitches, six, seven stitches, something like that. I just don't really care for the little fuzzy ends of serging that can poke out, and particularly at a neckline where you see that. So now that finishes it off really neatly. Now I'm gonna show you how to top stitch it. So we'll go to the right side of the garment. And again, I'm gonna start at the center back and I'm gonna set it up into the sewing machine just like I did for applying the binding. And this time I wanna make sure that the seam allowance is towards the garment. And you wanna find a reference point on your particular presser foot so that there's some, something visual that you can line up with the seam allowance. And in this case, I'm on the inside of the right toe of my, so, of my presser foot. I'm gonna move my needle position to the left just a little bit because I find that I like to top stitch a pretty good distance from that well of that seam. And if I'm not using a walking foot, but normally I would be. And so you can see that I'm getting a little tunneling, so I'm having to shift quite a bit. That's what happens when you don't use a walking foot. But by putting the needle position down and adjusting quite a bit, I can get a nice smooth line. When I come to the really thick part of the shoulder seam, I want to make sure that I make my stitches even. So I slow it down, readjust fairly often, and I'm over that in pretty good shape. So I would continue all the way around the entire neck, overlapping the seam allowance, or excuse me, the stitching line at the center back. Now I'm going to show you the final product. So here's the neck with some top stitching that's a fairly good distance from that seam allowance, but it really lies smoothly. There are no puckers, no little blips. Looks great. Now let's take a look at the finished mace on top. I'm really happy with mine. And I hope that you are too, and I also hope you had a lot of fun.